Welcome back my friends. Well, it's a little bit warmer today on this Sunday. I think it's the 11th and it's time to get the winter vegetables out to see how they've done by actually stopping in the ground or in containers. So we've got parsnips, carrots, potatoes, sprouts, a little bit of kale, chard. So let's have a look and see what we can harvest before we uh, move all these beds for my new projects for 2018. We've already had half this bed out, but uh, I need to use this in the um, carrot parsnip box inside. A little bit of counter. These are Gladiator F1s. just starting to regrow but solid I'll get these pulled out I'll show you what we've got yeah we've got some really nice parsnips there just watching I don't bump you guys but the key to it is putting lots of um, good quality ingredients that the parsnips can use their tap roots as you can see those tap roots have gone down a long way and then they uh, then that's the best one they're good old size so I'm pleased with those let's uh, go and move on to the carrots so this is what it looks like at the moment. We've already had a few out here, so I'm just going to tidy this up first, like. So that's given them a bit of a tidy up just to make it a little bit easier for us. Now, the collars, I mainly use those for planting the three seeds in. I don't normally chip my carrot seeds, because the sweet candle are quite good. Uh, and like I say, I've already took some out of here. But these have been in the ground uh, quite a while now and you do get the odd hole in the top so it might need a little bit more lime oh there's a buried one that's probably because i've actually when the carrot's been growing i've actually heat the soil over the top of the carrot and didn't spot that one right i'll get these pulled out we'll see what we've got well i'm pleased with those and there's just a couple that have uh, got completely misshapen. Definitely. And then I've got two that have just got some uh, little extra growths on, which is what you try and avoid. But most of them are good carrots, bar from a few holes at the top that uh, maybe the slugs have got into. So we'll see them later on when they're cleaned up. Well, I must say, the Brussels sprouts have done quite well, and they haven't blown. That's because we've uh, taken the uh, top out, but that will be something I'll try next year. Because people keep saying, well, you have to take your sprouts off before they blow. Well, take the top off, and perhaps they don't. They've just started to go rotten from the bottom up, so this will be a good time to uh, harvest these. One of the surviving kale, still got white fly, but I've had a few good comments on how to get rid of them uh, using brushes, using battery powered vacuums. But they do taste good anyway. And the kale. I wasn't too sure how the char would do, but as you can see, that's uh, been knocked about with a frost. But with a little bit of light pruning we've got some really nice uh, young leaves there don't know how long it'll actually come for but whether I harvest some today or just tidy them up just in case we get any more cold weather why do they do look yummy
Well, these are the last four buckets of carrots that I've planted. We've got the 22nd of May, uh, the 19th of July, 23rd of June, and 19th of July. Some Nantis, Nantis 5, Autumn King, and Nantis 5 again. So I'll be empty one of these, but as you can see, these um, covers have stopped the mice getting in, because last time they uh, were nibbling the tops. And uh, these are pest free. As you can see, the mouse trap hasn't uh, been set off. Good job I've seen that. Yeah, I always jump with mouse traps. And then at the back there, we've got the last container of potatoes. They are the second early is Marfonia. So I'll empty one carrot, the oldest, which I think was that one that was sowed at the end of the May last year. And we'll get the rest of the potatoes out. Well, I might get a few out just to see how they've uh, reacted with the frost. But you can see this is a polystyrene cover. It's uh, off a hot tub and it, hopefully it's protected them a little bit. So let's have a look at the second earlies, the Marfonia, for starters. I've, I've been pinching a bit of uh, potato compost out of here. Let's see if you can see that. Not quite. But uh, they haven't been frosted and they've been in the polytunnel for quite a while lots of small ones but as you know we do like the small ones and they did end up uh, getting blight but I believe there are probably four seed potatoes in here and these are the ones we've got to watch uh, a little bit too small to eat but I'll select a few of those for the next couple of weeks dinners So we'll have a look at this, uh, the Nantis uh, 5. They've been in the pots a long time, my friends, but this was a bit of an experiment to see what sort of quality uh, we, we could get. Now, there's lots of root growth there, so they would actually fetch the nutrients from the bottom. Now I probably didn't actually put anything major in the bottom of this, this is just ordinary compost. I haven't used my uh, potato compost, William, but in the future those are the sort of uh, mixes I should be having. But let's like say, they're not brilliant, well, there's a little, that's not good, but it's surprising how many we can get out of these to uh, add to um, a salad or my lunchbox. So there we have uh, a few carrots. Now there's probably still too many in that bucket, but they are still a good size. Now carrots, these will grow on again and then they'll go to seed. I'm not sure whether we'll get any uh, sort of, well, they aren't soft. They're still firm. It's just a matter of keeping them damp and obviously mice free. They uh, nibbled the whole tops out last year. So that was an idea from uh, Muddy Boots. And it's worked well. I'm going to harvest the rest out of the ground. It's been far too wet and cold, guys, as you probably understand. But these have been out now for a while. They're still quite firm. I've kept them covered with a towel, a damp towel. And I'm thinking about putting them into some damp compost to see how long I can keep them uh, throughout the summer. So overall, collecting and saving and keeping in the ground the winter vegetables has certainly worked for me. Now, I haven't had to look after them too much, but just putting this bit, bit of protection around them has helped. 
stopping them, the mice getting at them and any other predators but uh, yeah I'm pleased with that so I'm not much for freezing vegetables I don't think they taste as good as what you can have fresh out the ground so hopefully the main vegetables like potatoes carrots artichokes and some of the other vegetables we've seen today parsnips turnips and swedes uh, we've got to go and have a look at them haven't we and fresh on the plate you can't beat it let's go and have a look at the swedes i walked past these didn't even see them so we've still got a few more swedes in the ground and realistically these have got to come up now over the summer i've kept this one covered up it was one of the better ones so let's have a little look and see what it looks like now compared to the rest that's certainly enjoyed having that little greenhouse around it that's a street lamp cover those will do for today and then I'll have to decide what I'm doing with the rest as and when I need to get into this area for the containers but we'll see that on the tour so yesterday Saturday the 10th during the storm I've topped these containers up now all the containers uh, if you don't know this has had nettle concentrate in the bottom compost bin run off comfrey oh that's the wormery and that's the comfrey then these last two drums have had my magic mix a mixture of all of them i've put a little bit in the bottom of these for the onions the kelsey onions and dan's giant 10 pounder I'll go there and then we've got those areas at the back for the tomatoes and cucumbers now I'm just looking at a drip feed system using a 10 litre container for each area I'll be showing you that in a future video so the sand from the carrots and the parsnips will be going in there I'll top that one up I've put some of my compost from the compost bin in the bottom saturated it with a bit of liquid plant food concentrate the magic mix then I'll just top it off with plain compost that way the roots for the carrots will go straight down into the goodness below and hopefully won't fork not sure what we're doing with this side at the moment the overwintering peppers have died no green left in there the money maker and gigantimo trials gigantimo on the left i'm going to scoop some of that compost out damp it up and put it into my grow room there's no good trying to actually grow them in those sacks and hopefully the mice didn't take those like they did the other trials i did with the courgettes and cucumbers still a bit more work to do here and all the grapevines look like they're got little buds on them and i'll probably trim them as they grow just take out the dead this time i'm still doing my compost mixes the black plastic bags there is some a fresh lot of compost that i've found this is where i've been mixing the compost together this compost is in a better condition and i'm going to sieve that mix some of my liquid plant food in with it and use that to put down the boreholes I've covered these up because I've put my liquid plant foods in same with those over there and those but they just need topping up with a compost mix now this is this year's compost bin and uh, it's really nice now some of the giant veg growers will probably say why are you putting that in that's because I'm not buying any 
foods to feed them. I'm going to do it naturally. Might end up with egg on my face, but with the smallest parsnip and the smallest carrot, the smallest beetroot and the smallest uh, swede, but never mind. So I've got a bit of compost left in there and we've still got quite a bit in here. Should last us for a while. Must remember to harvest these two red cabbage as well at the end. I haven't got nothing to harvest on the purple uh, sprouting broccoli at the moment. The pigeons took the tops out, so I've just got to wait for the side shoots to uh, give me some uh, a nice little florets. I've had to open the cage up here so I could get at the compost out the carrots. So now I can get compost out that one as well. Still trying to dig the leeks out, it's been far too wet. And the red onions are still holding their own. Hopefully they won't go to seed this year. And anybody that uh, didn't see the previous video, that's my spring cabbage. Something off a war zone. The Jerusalem artichoke beds are going to be my um, sweet corn bed so I'm going to get as many of those tubers out as I can from the Jerusalem artichokes put my sweet corn in there harvest the sweet corn and hopefully any that I've missed will shoot and I'll be able to dig down and find them fruit cage is exactly the same everything's building up nicely and I've got plenty of wood chips there to put on the paths where I've made a bit of a mess I had to move two turnips to there so I don't know what they'll be like but they'll be a, a little bit of a re le reveal later and then finally my uh, broad beans now I've only just stood some of them up the strings were there but the trouble is the stems got so soft that they just slid down the canes so as you can see that one there because it was on the floor it was trying to grow upwards and just a couple of casualties where the stems had gone completely but there's the life from the bottom so it's growing from the bottom but we'll see how that gets on let's have a look at the vegetables now they're cleaned up so like all good gardeners that was the uh, the best one that one was the one that got the most canker on so i'll cut that out and then that was the smallest Two swedes on the left and two turnips on the right. With the turnips, not sure what they're going to be look like inside, but might be able to salvage a meal. I must say I'm going to enjoy those. I'll take a few artichokes, a few potatoes, followed by the ten-month-old carrots. Some lovely sprouts, followed by some nice kale. Some lovely coloured red cabbage. Just a little bit of chard to top up my uh, lunchbox. And last but not least, some really nice spring greens. I enjoy them. Well, it's been an interesting 12 months and spring hopefully isn't too far away. The frog in the top left hand corner is still smiling, now he's got rid of all that snow. Uh, we've had a little hint that they're going to extend our gritting season to the end of April. So I don't know whether they're uh, going to take on what on board what the Met Office, saying, Met Office are saying. But let's hope Easter and our spring isn't disturbed this year. We could do with a really nice growing season here in the UK. Thank you to everyone who's commenting, subscribes, likes and shares. I do really appreciate it. I do enjoy sharing my allotment journey and I've got a few more things to come. I hope I'm not putting too many videos up. This one's going to uh, get to the point where uh, 20 minutes. So we'll leave it there. But thank you everyone. Happy gardening to you all. Till next time. Try for now.